What's up everyone, I'm Taylor. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you've all had a great week and I hope most of all that you've stayed cool. It's hot out there. It's time for the weekly rundown. usually the time when people hop on a plane and go visit friends or fancy destinations. I actually had Hawaii plans with my family that got canceled. But now this is leaving travelers starved. Well, one airport in Taiwan has the solution. A fake itinerary where you check in, go through passport control and security, and even board the aircraft. You just never leave. Taipei's downtown Shangshan Airport began offering travelers the chance to do just that with some 60 people hungry to get going nowhere. Flight attendants even chatted to them and explained coronavirus prevention methods. The airport is using this public event as an opportunity to show off renovations they recently completed while passengers have stayed away. While they're fake traveling, some are actually traveling, and guess where to? Here, can you believe it? And guess what they're doing? Looking for love in La Quinta. I'm referring to the cast of the reality show, The Bachelorette. Yep, apparently Claire Crawley is in town right now with her hopeful lovers, where they will spend all summer recording. Sorry, y'all, I hope you brought some cool clothes. Now, this is all social media rumors, but according to my man, Reality Steve, they are at the La Quinta Resort. Steve says, Claire's men arrived in Palm Springs on Wednesday, so we went and checked it out, and we did see lots of equipment, but no boys. So, boys and Claire, if you're watching this, welcome to the heat and good luck. I do have a favorite boy already, but I won't mention any names. <laughs> now to an unusual friendship between a dog and cow that blossomed in Oklahoma. Meet Cupcake and Bo. Bo is a cattle dog for Jania and Tim Myers. Bo wasn't so good on the job because he gets car sick. But when it comes to nursing Cupcake, a deformed calf, he's the perfect pooch for the position. Jania says the two are inseparable. Bo helps clean Cupcake when she spills milk on her face and even helped introduce her to solid foods. The two spend their days playing and cuddling and just enjoying life. We're just gonna keep riding the love train here. Residents of a Belgian retirement home are able to soothe the pain of social distancing measures by embracing their loved ones through a hug curtain. Staff at the nursing home installed the large plastic curtain last month and it has proven to be very popular with the residents who had not been allowed any visitors for 11 weeks. Visitors coming to see a family member were very enthusiastic about the concept. Meanwhile, an 86-year-old resident of the home said the curtain was the most beautiful invention she had ever seen. She added that she cried the first time she was able to hug her daughter again. The curtain, decorated with flowers and bright colors, is made of a big plastic sheet with two pockets on each side where residents and visitors or staff insert their arms. After each use, the nurses carefully disinfect it. Now we all know the latest fashion trend this year is the face mask, but sometimes it makes social distancing hard, especially when you're eating or drinking. That's where Shut Your Mouth comes in. Oh my God, that's the best name I've ever heard. The Texas-based company has created a face mask with a zipper over your mouth that makes it easy to just unzip and take a gulp of water or whatever you're drinking and grab a bite of food. That's genius. I really should have come up with that. Now to another fashion trend this COVID season that took four months and 41 rolls of duct tape. Put those together and you have one COVID-themed prom dress. 18-year-old Peyton Minker from Illinois made a prom dress entirely out of duct tape for a scholarship contest. Unfortunately, her prom was canceled because of the COVID-19 outbreak, but Minker used that as her inspiration. She even made accessories like an anklet and a face mask. And bringing it even closer to home, a 2020 grad from Palm Desert High School was also a finalist and her name is Anna Nall. Would you look at that dress? You go, Anna. Fashion is one of her strongest passions, and she was even voted most likely to be on the cover of a fashion magazine by her classmates. And now she's headed to UC Berkeley. The votes were actually due yesterday, but good luck to both of these talented girls who are in the running for a big scholarship. Sports are slowly but surely coming back, thank goodness, and 22 NBA teams returned to competition in Orlando and the practice courts are ready. 
Here is a time-lapse video of crews converting a number of Disney World ballrooms into basketball courts. Basketball in Disney ballrooms, what? The season is expected to start on July 30th, but NBA Commissioner Adam Silver is not ruling out putting everything on hold if there's another outrageous outbreak of cases. Here's something good to come out of COVID. Italy's Coast Guard says marine life is moving around more than ever in the Mediterranean Sea. The sea life is reportedly moving into spaces that are usually filled with people. Without roaring motorboats and with beachgoers cooped up in their houses, marine creatures are enjoying their homes. Instead of hitting open waters, most people are jumping into their pools. Well, a French company is transforming dumpsters into swimming pools, okay? The swimming pool dumpster, or splash box, was tested for a year before going on the market. The 42-foot-long tub can be buried or semi-buried. Okay, now this is a story about some real green thumbs. European scientists have revived a 32,000-year-old plant from seeds buried in the Arctic long ago. Researchers are also looking into the sequence of genome of this ancient flowering plant. It is believed to have been buried by an Ice Age squirrel near the banks of a river in what is now Siberia. Eventually, researchers hope to discover the conditions that kept the seeds viable for 32,000 years. Okay, now thrill seekers tried their hands, or feet as the case would be, on a tightrope over the ruins of a castle near Prague in the Czech Republic. The two towers of Trotsky Castle stand on spires of rock, the remains of a couple of volcanic vents. Amateur and up-and-coming high-wire walkers were given a chance to harness in and see how far they could go. The organizers of the event said the castle is an awesome site for the daredevils to practice their skills. For those who lost their balance, it was just a short fall before the safety line caught them. Yeah, no thank you. The holidays are still about five months away in case you've lost track of what month we're in. I know I have. But your time to vote on Coffee Maid's seasonal flavor is just about run out. The two choices for coffee fans to choose from this year are chocolate chip cookie or hot cocoa flavored Coffee Maid creamer. Voting already a close, like I said, but I still want to know what you think. Go to our Weekly Rundown Instagram page and let me know. The new limited edition creamer will launch with the brand's seasonal lineup in September. Okay, now this story is just so cute, I had to throw it in. Check out this cheeky chipmunk in Southern Maine. Cheeks here shows up at Meg Niles' home every morning. Stuffing his face, making himself at home for a little over three weeks now, eating out of children's hands. Really though, it seems as though Cheeks has the family eating out of his hands. Cheeks will chirp if someone doesn't venture out by 7 a.m. with his morning meal. His preferred diet is fresh fruit, almonds, and sunflower seeds. Okay, I can think of someone who would really love this, and that's our Olivia Sandusky. She is a hummingbird queen, but I'm sure she'll take on some chipmunks too. She literally saved a little hummingbird last weekend, you guys. The little guy was overheated or something, and next thing you know, it was live to the rescue. A big round of applause to her. Coming up after the break, a man fends off a killer snake while driving down a highway. This cute little girl makes her first live TV appearance in a way that's sure to make you laugh. Plus, there's so much going on in the tech world, from cool creations to some changes on popular apps. Stick around, The Weekly Rundown will be right back. Welcome back to the Weekly Rundown, where we wrap up what's been trending throughout the week. As you may know, live TV can be very unexpected. Well, an English health expert was doing a TV interview when her daughter decided to join in on the fun. Claire Wenham, a global health policy professor, was doing a live interview on the BBC when Little Scarlet appeared on the screen. Wenham was discussing local lockdowns in England while Scarlett's mind was elsewhere as she appeared to look for the best place to put a picture of a unicorn. When the girl turned her attention to the interview, she pressed her mother to know who she was talking to. What's his name? What's his name, mommy? She said. What's his name? What's his name, mommy? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Mommy, what's his name? 
Having received the answer she was looking for, Scarlett returned to the task of finding a spot for her unicorn picture. Now that's adorable and is sure to bring light to these times. Now to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Orson Bridge linking Sweden and Denmark, Danish band Lucas Graham performed from the top of one of the bridge's pylons. The band, known for hit singles like Mama Said and Seven Years, performed more than 670 feet above the Orison Strait. Now that's amazing. Take a look at this driver that fended off a venomous snake while driving on an Australian highway. Okay, that's casual. Police body cam video caught the conversation between the driver and an officer on the roadside in Australia's Queensland state. You found a snake in your car. It's in the back of the tray, mate. Ah, oh, that one. Police found a dead eastern brown snake in the back of the utility truck. The driver, a 27-year-old man named Jimmy, had been pulled over by traffic police for speeding. But his mind was clearly out of it because he was fighting a snake, people. Hello. The eastern brown snake is highly venomous and one of the deadliest snakes in the world. Well, what a story that guy has to tell, huh? So apparently Apple just wants to hold your entire life in its phones now. The company wants its devices to take the place of your passport, driver's license, and other forms of ID. The tech giant has filed five patent applications for the technology. They detail how a digital copy of your ID can be stored, transmitted, and confirmed. Apple does not use the word iPhone in the applications, but refers to devices. The same six inventors are credited on the five pan applications. Now check out this amazing high-flying tribute to those fighting the coronavirus. 300 drones were used in the show in the skies above Seoul, South Korea. The government ran a social media campaign to thank frontline medical workers and then expanded it to include everyone who respects mask orders and practice social distancing. Officials didn't advertise the show ahead of time, so it ended up being a surreal surprise for everyone. Okay, now this will get ya. Who's a fan of Shark Week? Raise your hands. Yeah, I see you all raising your hands through the TVs right now, so here's the deal. US Direct wants to pay you to watch Shark Week. What? Yeah, crazy, I know. You can get paid $1,000 to watch the Sharkies right from your couch. Have your jaws dropped yet? Well, if you're interested and think you're the jawsome fan they're looking for, then head to their site seen on the screen. Ah, Tinder. No, I've never been on it, but for those who have, the app is testing a new feature. Drum roll, please. Video chat. It will roll out in Virginia, Illinois, Georgia, and Colorado first, and will also be tested in a dozen other countries, including Australia, France, South Korea, and Chile. People can indicate they're interested in a video date on a match-by-match -match basis. If both parties say they're ready to video chat, the function will be unlocked within their chat. Unlike a regular video chat, the face-to-face -face feature splits the screen equally between the two parties. Other dating apps, such as Bumble and Hinge, have already apparently incorporated the capability. Like I said, I don't know. Now let's move over to Instagram, that I use. If you're trying to inject some positivity into your posts, a new feature called pinned comments could be just the thing. Instagram began testing the feature in May, but now it's rolling it out for all of its users. The added option allows you to pin a few comments to the top of the comments thread on your post in hopes that it might encourage people on Instagram to be nicer. This is just one of the new features Instagram designed to help limit the harassment and bullying that can go on within the social media giant. And what is the only app gaining more popularity than Insta right now? TikTok. And now TikTokers everywhere are in panic because this week, Mike Pompeo announced the U.S. is looking into banning TikTok. This comes amid rising tensions between the U.S. and China as scrutiny on TikTok and Chinese technology firms continues to grow. Now, I knew people would definitely react to this, so I took to social media, of course, to see just what their reactions were. So it's time for Say What? So here's some of the comments I got. Hallelujah. Sad, it has kept me laughing during this time, but also, if it isn't safe, then it needs to go. Ban it, kids need to get outside. What will I do with my free time now? Oh, good riddance. Ban it, oh, I'd low-key be disappointed. 
Oh no, how will Eddie spend his time? Now that's a shot at one of our faux talks, but shout out to you, Eddie. Now let me know what you think on our Instagram. Coming up after the break, we're checking in with Manny the Movie Guy, who's bringing things very close to home. I'll explain. Plus, a New Mexico company thinks they have created something that can kill the coronavirus. What could that be? Get your thinking caps on, light those light bulbs, and I'll see you in two minutes. Welcome back to the Weekly Rundown. Palm Springs is a destination wonder for so many people. Bachelorette parties, weekend getaways, weddings, you name it. Well, imagine being stuck waking up in Palm Springs every single day. Oh shoot, that's all of us locals. Well, now there's a movie about it. Manny the Movie Guy is letting you know whether or not you should watch it. It's gonna be a beautiful wedding. This one has it all, a wedding movie, a romantic comedy with a sci-fi twist. Yet, Palm Springs is fresh and totally entertaining. I'm Sarah. Niles. It's a rom-com with not just a heart, but brain as well. And the best part, it's about my city. Yes, right. It begins with a wedding where we meet Andy Samberg's Niles. Yeah, Niles is interesting because when you first meet him, it seems like he is completely the master of his universe and in complete control. The reason? He's in a time loop, stuck on November 9th, the day of the wedding. So he lives like there's no tomorrow until he meets Kristen Milliotti's Sarah. <laughs> It was such an incredible combination of like dark, weird, so funny, and like very moving. The fantastic ensemble also has Camila Mendez as Sarah's sister, the bride, and J.K. Simmons providing the laughs as the mysterious Roy. To the struggle. How much you care about Niles and Sarah, you know, Andy and Kristen's characters was, was what really jumped out at me. He's absolutely right. Imagine all the romantic comedy and timely cliches, deconstruct the heck out of them, and you'll get Palm Springs. And yes, this one was not shot in Palm Springs. It was filmed in Santa Clarita and Palmdale, and one day up in Joshua Tree. Why? Budgetary restrictions and uh, the California tax rebate. My biggest regrets about the movie is that we weren't able to spend the entire time in Palm Springs because I love Palm Springs and I love Palm The shooting location should not take away from the brilliance of the film. It's funny, sad, and will make you think. May I cut in? It's the first dance. Great characters, confident direction by Max Barbacow, and memorable performances. Palm Springs is one of my favorite films this year. This is crazy! If you have a chance to get stuck in a time loop, what era of your life would it be? I mean, I would say this one. I, I was gonna say that too. We kind of are anyway, so I know what it would be like. Yeah. Oh, and I will just be interviewing you guys forever and ever and ever. Oh my god! And for that, Palm Springs gets the perfect four out of four. Stream it on Hulu. Kisses. But switching gears now, the oh-so-unfortunate coronavirus has changed life as we know it across the world. And now researchers are continuing to search for that special vaccine or cure. Well, a company in New Mexico says they've come up with a revolutionary idea that could help kill coronavirus. Ryan Laughlin has this enlightening story. Energy wants to naturally circulate to naturally rectify itself and reach a state of homeostasis. I've been trying to make things better ever since I was a kid. And when I was a kid, I didn't get listened to. And once I got older, I said, you know what? I'm gonna change the world because if I don't do it, it doesn't seem like it's gonna happen. Isaac Barbosa says he's created the most efficient light bulb in the world, but now he's working on shedding his light in a specific direction. During this time of COVID, I really wanted to join the fight figure out how I could be of best of health. UVC light, a specific ultraviolet light, can disinfect surfaces and kill viruses. That technology isn't new, but Barbosa says using his highly efficient invention and applying it in new ways is. Like this fan. It's important that we also disinfect the air. And so a technology like this that isn't even on the market right now is really important in a time like now. It pulls air in and uses UVC light to kill airborne viruses. 
Isaac's startup is currently working with Sandia Labs to test their products and they're looking for space to set up a manufacturing site in Albuquerque. UVC light can be dangerous to people if they're directly exposed, but he says if you could apply this technology to schools, grocery stores, even airplanes when people aren't in them, it may help keep people safe. And whether or not it is the cure-all, we need to do what we can while we can do it. Now that's pretty interesting. Do you guys really think it could work though? Let me know on Instagram. Now coming up after the break, it's summer, meaning that a lot of people are hitting the road and taking vacations to beat this extreme heat. Well, there's some apps that might help make your trek a little smoother. We'll tell you about it when the Weekly Rundown returns. Welcome back to the Weekly Rundown. Travel bugs, listen up. If you're planning on running away from the Coachella Valley heat and hopping into your RV this summer to head somewhere that's not so close to record-breaking heat, then PC Mike has an app or two you might want to consider downloading while packing your bathing suits and towels. Gas Buddy helps you find the lowest price for gas. Easy to use, navigate, just search by zip code, city or state. Huge number of users. They contribute by updating prices regularly, meaning the app is consistently up to date. And one unique feature of Gas Buddy is the so-called gas price heat map. It shows gas price per gallon across the US and Canada, free for iOS and Android. I exit interstate guide is a must have on your next road trip. Figuring out where you are on the interstate shows you what's ahead. That means the app can help you find gas, food, and a place to stay for the night. Use the app's search function to find the specific restaurant chain or amenity like Wi-Fi, free for iOS and Android. And Road Trippers is a map app that's built for travelers. Plan your road trip with friends, find an amazing place nearby you never knew existed. Discover millions of places like local diners and quirky roadside attractions or scenic points, national parks, hotels. Get inspiration from the app's pre-made trip guides on some of the most interesting and once-in-a-lifetime routes that you need to see at least once. The app is free for iOS and Android. If you want to know more about these apps, you can check out PC Mike's tech blog at the address on your screen. He's built in direct links to everything he just showed you. So all you wanderers better get to it. We'll be right back. Today is National Dun 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 Eat Your Jello Day. Random, I know, but hey, yesterday was National Mojito Day and tomorrow is National French Fry Day. So I'd say it's a pretty good week, but I'll see you all next week. Enjoy your French fries tomorrow, okay?